Now, from today onwards, we are going to start the studies. And I want that everyone should have full power with full enthusiasm and joy. You should start your learning. Now, one thing very important, when you are watching the video, I want that each and every student should have their chemistry book with them. You keep on watching the video and do listen very carefully what I am reading and see that in your book. Those who have not purchased, please do purchase your book as soon as possible. I finished in chemistry, we finished the portion till second chapter, but it was not fully done. I explained about physical and chemical changes of the second chapter. I hope you all have studied till then. So in this video, we are moving on further with the next topic that is about chemical reaction. So, what is a chemical reaction? When one or more substances undergo a chemical change with the absorption or evolution of energy to give new substances. Means, whenever we take two or more reactants, here I have shown a reaction in which you can see this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side. How do we decide the left and right? With the help of arrow. Left hand side is called the reactants and right hand side is called the products. So when one or more substances undergo a chemical change with the absorption or evolution of energy to give new substances, that is called a chemical reaction. Here you can see there are two reactants. A reaction is, a chemical reaction is taking place and what we have taken as a reactant, a new product we have got. It means some changes has taken place in these two compounds. We took sodium chloride but as a product we got silver chloride we took silver agno3 silver nitrate but as a product we got sodium nitrate so you can see the changes in the reactants and in the products so this is only called a chemical reaction now chemical reactions cannot take place very easily like we take two compounds we are trying to add them and we'll get a new product no there are some important conditions which we have to follow for a chemical reaction to take place. Okay, before moving on to the conditions, let me explain you one more thing first. As I told you, we took NaCl as a reactant, but in a product we didn't get NaCl, we got a new product. It means the compounds are what? In which two or more elements combined and they get a, they make a compound means there is some bonding in between each and every compound yes now here NaCl has a bond this bond has been broken and we have got a new compound AgCl which is having a new bond so we can say that when a chemical reaction take place the old bonds in the reactants are broken and new bonds are formed yes so we can say that so the old bonds which are broken that is in the reactants and the new bonds which are formed that is in the products now we will move on to the conditions for a chemical change the first one is close contact whichever element or a compound we are trying to make them react with each other we need that there should be a close contact in between those compounds or in elements we cannot do that from the periodic table. We can take any of the element or any of the compound formed and we are trying to mix them and we are trying that we should get a new product. No. Only those reactions happen, those which have close contact in between. Like in this reaction, I have given one example, I have shown with an example how the close contact is in between. There is sodium reacting with two molecules of water they both have a close contact in between that is why in a product we have got sodium hydroxide and also hydrogen sodium hydroxide sodium and OH they are reacted with each other giving another gas that is hydrogen and here you can see there is an arrow sign this arrow sign shows that the gas is evolved Matlab gas ur gaye hai. That is why the arrow sign is up. So this is a reaction showing that there should be a close contact in between either the element or in between a compound. Then only a reaction will take place. So it is written in the book. Read it carefully. 
A chemical reaction occurs only when the substances are brought in close contact with each other. The close contact can be brought about by grinding, by mixing the reactants together or by dissolving it. Okay. Like we can dissolve a mixture, a compound in a water like that. Okay. Moving on to the next condition that is the state of the reactants. Means which compound you are taking, what is the state? Either it is solid, liquid, gas or aqueous, whatever. What is the state of the compound or the element? Why? Because you have studied that the kinetic energy of molecules is least in solids and maximum in gases. Means the movement of molecules is least in solids. Means they are not able to move easily because of they are complete packed but they can move very nicely in gases so that is why state is also responsible as more the reactants will move the collision will happen the reaction will take fast means the reaction will be completed faster so frequency of collision will also be maximum for gases and hence reaction will be facilitated most when the reactants are in the gaseous state next is heat some reactions occur only by heating. We do not need to do different, different, we don't, do not need some different conditions like uh, dissolving or like by, um, you can say by mixing like that. If you simply heat up a compound, then we can also get that the reaction is completed. Like it is given in your book, they have taken a big compound that is potassium chlorate. You can see in the book, I am reading it, I have not shown it here. I have shown the another reaction. You see in the book, potassium chlorate, KClO3, a single compound, when it is heated, it gets dissociates into its constituents. Means from which it is formed. So KCl is separated from oxygen. So such type of reaction is also called decomposition reaction in which the compound had been broken broken down into its constituents another example i have taken here that is fe iron and sulfur they do not react by mixing if you add sulfur and iron and you want that you should get a compound fes this may not happen you need a condition that is heat on heating they will get mixed easily that is why Fe plus S on heating gives FeS. Now conditions required, how we show in the reactions, you can see here uh, in this reaction only, on this arrow, on the top I have written the condition. If you will not write this condition, your reaction will be completely wrong. Remember that, okay? So we have to show the conditions also. The third, fourth condition is light. Some reactions takes place in the presence of light. The best example is what? Photosynthesis, preparation of food by the plants, which is impossible without sunlight and chlorophyll. So they, it takes place in the presence of sunlight. 6CO2 plus 6H2O, it gives C6H2O6, which is the glucose of food for the plants and it gives oxygen, which we human beings take. Here also you can see the arrow on the top, means oxygen gases evolved. Okay, and some more many reactions are given in your book. You can read it, but remember on the top of the arrow you have to mention the condition. Next is pressure. Some reactions need pressure, higher, high pressure, so that the mix the reactants get mixed, gets reacted with each other. This is a very important reaction. You have to study it very carefully. You will get this in physics also. It is the reaction for the formation of ammonia. NH3 is ammonia. Nitrogen plus 3H2O. In the presence of, this is the atmospheric pressure. 200 to 900 ATM means atmospheric pressure. What is Fe? Iron. MO, molybdenum. These are the catalyst and promoter. I will explain you that. These are two, the, these two are the catalyst and promoter.